Today I'm going to speak about Wi-Fi, right? We see it everywhere, we hear it, uh, but we don't really think about it, right? Because we just use it and it just works, right? So, Wi-Fi, right? What it means, it means uh, wireless fidelity. Wireless fidelity. So, wireless fidelity is a, a, a phrase that was coined by a group, right? The name of the group is called the IEEE, right? The IEEE is the Institute, Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers. Okay? It's the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers. You can check out their website uh, at uh, IEEE.org or IEEE.org. Uh, and just so you know, that ORG, uh, it's what they, it's called a, a TLD, or TLD is a top level domain, right? And a TLD describes a, a domain name, right? So top, dot T, and Dot org is a not-for-profit organization, all right? A non-profit uh, organization, right? So, uh, we have, I, okay, so we have the IEEE. The website is IEEE.org, and dot org, it's a non-profit organization. Now, uh, wireless fidelity, um, so what happened? This is, this is a, uh, let me explain. Um, there's a standard in networking that's called the 802 standard, right? So the 802 is a body of standards that define networking. The entire 802, 802 standard defines networking, right? Um, it, it's called the 802 because it was invented in the second month of the year 1980. So in the second month of the year 1980, right, the IEEE divides an entire body of standards to define networking. To define networking. We've seen this before. I'm going to tell you where. Uh, let's say, okay, 802.1x, let's move over here. 802.1x was called port-based authentication. Port-based authentication. Uh, we're gonna go over that later, another day, right? 802.3 is an entire body of standards that define something that's called ethernet, right? Ethernet is a uh, cable that's run from point A to point B. Let's say if you have a cubicle somewhere, and um, you have an uh, Ethernet cable that comes, runs from point A to point three. Ethernet comes in uh, Cat5, that's an example. Uh, Cat5e, Cat6, right? Uh, okay. Okay, so e that's Ethernet. Um, 802.5, right, was a, a standard that's called token ring, right? That was a standard. Now, let's go far farther down. Now, 802.11 is... Uh, a standard that's called Wi-Fi. Now, Wi-Fi was ratified in 1997. That's when it was ratified. That's when the standard was ratified. Um, now, there are different amendments to this particular to this standard. There was um, A, B, G, N, and A, C. A, B, G, N, and A, C. Okay. Um, each amendment does something different. It has a different uh, throughput of megabits per second. Let me explain. Okay, so follow me. We have A, B, G, N, and A, C. Okay. Um, before I go on, I want to explain how Wi-Fi operates. Right? If you if you have a rock and you throw it in a pond of water, right? it's going to uh, cause what is called ripples, right? Um, these ripples in Wi-Fi, they're called concentric circles, right? So this is a concentric circle, and the farther you get away from the center of the ripple, the signal is going to degrade, it makes sense. So with Wi-Fi, right, you have 802.11a, right, has a maximum transfer rate of 54 megabits per second. B has a maximum transfer rate of 11 megabits per second, correct? Uh, uh, G has a maximum transfer rate of 54 megabits per second. Uh, N has a maximum transfer rate of 72 megabits per second and 300 megabits 
megabits per second? Yes, correct. Megabits per second, and AC, which is the newest standard, has a maximum transfer rate of 1.3 gigabits per second, correct? Now, um, okay, so hypothetically speaking, if you have a router that's right here and it's running 802.11n, right? And the closer you are to here, you will have 72 megabits per second. Megabits per second. If you, when you get farther away, though I do not know the exact numbers, and uh, I will do my research, but when you go farther away, the concept is, it'll go 72, 54, let's say 48 right here, let's say uh, 36 right here. Uh, you know, it'll degrade when it gets farther away from the center of the access point. Let's say if you have an Android phone, and you look at your Android phone, uh, or I don't know, I'm not sure about Wi-Fi, but I know Android, it'll see the, the speed in megabits per second, that it, the speed in association to the center of the access point. Uh, I'm trying to think what else I can tell you. Oh, uh, you under, have to understand the concept of radio frequency and the radio frequency spectrum. So from uh, three kilohertz, right? I, I don't know if this is exact the number, hold on. Uh, go, radio frequency goes up all the way up to x-ray, right? From around three kilohertz to x-ray. So, kilohertz. Who is Hertz? There was a man that his name is Heinrich Hertz. Heinrich Hertz. And we dedicate an entire unit of measurement to Heinrich Hertz. Uh, it is called the Hertz because, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the man discovered radio frequency. So, the Hertz is from here to here, and a Hertz is a cycle per second. From here to say here is one cycle per second. Let's say uh, if you listen to 1010 winds, 1010 uh, winds, uh, a 1010 winds is in Jersey, is a radio station that oscillates at 1010 kilohertz uh, per second, kilohertz per second. If you listen to high 97, high, high 97 is a radio station that oscillates at 97 million, right? 97 million, you see that? Uh, megahertz, MHD, megahertz. Now, where does Wi-Fi come into this equation? You good? Okay. Wi-Fi is uh, fits into 2.4 in the in the end range, right? It's 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz frequency range. Um, 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. Uh, this is the same range that uh, microwave ovens also operate at. So let's say if you uh, are, oh, this is why this is beneficial. It's coming to me. So now, let's say if uh, the, at break time, if your company uses uh, microwaves, though the microwave ovens can interfere with these frequencies because a microwave oven can op uh, operate in these frequencies right here, uh, 2.4 gigahertz, uh, and a cordless phone operates at 900 megahertz MHZ, right? And hertz go all the way up to X-ray. It goes all the way up to X-ray and gamma ray. Oh, last thing, because, you know, because my home, homeboy right here, Chike, you know, is getting tired, but anyway. So anyway, so the last thing, a hertz, right? In the United States, right, uh, the uh, FCC, which is the Federal Communication Commission, right? The Federal Communication, no, no, the Federal, yes, the Federal Communication Commission, they, um, they regulate radio frequency, right? There are, uh, in the 802, okay, so there are 13 channels. 13 channels, one, no, one, six, and 11 are called non-overlapping channels. So your access point or your router should be on uh, one, six, or 11, so as not to overlap each other. What happens is one starts at 2.412, correct? Um, and each channel is five megahertz apart. So the channel two is uh, 2.417, correct? And hold on, um, I'm, short on, I'm short on time here, but to get the best connectivity, your router to the, to, to the Wi-Fi router, your channel, your router, your access point has to be on channels 1611 because those are called non-overlapping channels. Um, just keep that in mind, 16011. And yeah, if you have any questions, any comments, please feel free to ask. Uh, 
si ustedes tienen cualquier clase de pregunta, eh, usted puede preguntar, deja comenta en el, en el comentario y, y yo trato de explicar lo mejor que puedo, en inglés o en español. English or Spanish, I'll try, to, I'll try my best to answer. And this is Cisco Engineer William, signing off.